In this video, we're going to take a look at how to design an ad flyer like this. And this is coming up. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel once again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, please hit on the subscribe button if you're old here. Thank you so much for showing up. So as usual, a link to download the resources that I'll be using in this video will be linked up in the description so you can check out any follow suit. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the magic world of Photoshop. So here I'm going to make use of A3. You can as well use any other size that will be comfortable for you like A4, A5. It depends on where you want to present the ad. So we go to Preset, International Paper and I'm going to choose A3 right from here. I'll go ahead and then I'll click OK and then I'm supposed to have a paper like this. I'm going to start off by creating a rectangle on top here but then I just have to make sure that I've got everything on point so let me add a new guideline that is going to basically guide me so I'm going to add 45% guideline in the horizontal vertices okay so 45% and then I'll click OK so this is where I want my guideline to be you will later see in this video as to the reason why we add this guideline so i'm going to start with my rectangle tool and i'll create a rectangle over here so you can just make it above the normal size that you have and then we're going to press ctrl t to transform it so what we're going to do is we're going to place the cursor over here you can see that if you have your cursor over here it has a different appearance and when you bring it over here it has a different appearance so we want this one and then you're going to drag it a little bit like this so the reason why i set this guideline is because i want my rectangle up here and then you can try to just transform it a little bit but we want something a bit slanted like this and then you can go ahead and you take over here and you're done with the first rectangle so what we're going to do is we're going to click on it go to the blending options and then we're going to add a gradient overlay i've added the gradient overlay to my gradient pack so I'm just going to give you the hex code so that you can just do it yourself. So this is the first hex code right over here. And then this is the second one that I used. And that one is also here. So you go ahead and you click OK and then OK. And then I'm going to change my angle to 39%. You can just twerk it around if you want to just do it. So I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. So moving on, I'm going to create another rectangle beneath of this document and i'll try to position it here that is where we'll be putting the contact and other details over there so i'm just going to hold alt and drag this fx that is the effect onto the second rectangle that we create and that is going to save us a lot of time like going back to the blending options to kind of create another blending option for the rectangle so that is just a quick tip of how you can just copy an effect onto another layer basically yeah so next i want to i just don't want to leave the background so plain like this so i'll come on top of the background over here and i'm going to create a circle or an ellipse tool i pick my ellipse tool and i'm going to create something like that over there so i'll, I'll just drag it over here like this and i'll press ctrl t to transform it so i right click and select the warp over here so the warp is going to help me to kind of tweak it like this and i'll leave it over here just like that so basically this is what i want to have and i'll press ctrl j to make a duplicate drag it over here press ctrl t and i'm going to flip it horizontal and then i'm going to send this one here and leave it right over there so these are going to serve as our background so i'll just go ahead and group them by pressing ctrl g and then i'll group this called background next off i'm going to add on top of this some couple of tests so i'll go for my test tool and the first font that i'll be using is called poppins i'll leave a link to download it in the description so poppins over here i'll change the color to white and i'll click ok so i'm going to increase the size to make it a little bit bigger and i'm going to add the name to it so it is going to be so basically it is top gentleman so i'm going to press ctrl a and then i'm going to change this one to semi bold italic and i'll make sure that i press ctrl t again to transform it to be a little bit bigger because it is going to serve as 
the main heading and i'll press ctrl a and center it over here so i'll press ctrl d to deselect it and i'll bring this one down a little bit like that let me zoom in so that i can just get a glimpse of what i am doing so next off i'm going to duplicate this one by pressing ctrl j and i'm going to drag it down over here i'm going to increase the size a little bit and change the perspective to like something bold without that italics and i'm going to change that one to shoes so i'm going to type shoes but then the shoes i want to make the sh and instead of the o i'm going to replace it with that shoe itself and then i'm going to type the es over there so basically the o here is going to be replaced with a shoe pretty soon so i'm going to increase the size to about 160 or something somewhere around that area just to make it a little bit bold and like this and i'll press ctrl a to make sure that this is centered as well so i can still increase it up a little bit it just depends on you or you can better still select this all and i'll go to the toggle character here and close this one up a little bit to about minus 40 so it can become a little bit close okay next off i right click and go to the blending options and i'm going to add a drop shadow to it so i'll drop a shadow around this one and i'll click okay you can just copy the same shadow like we did first hold alt and then drag the effect onto the top gentleman so that you have the shadows around that also so what we're going to do next is we go to the resources or the files that i'm using and i'm going to bring in my first image so this is the image that i use i'll just drag and drop it inside of photoshop on a different document and what i'm going to do is i'm going to double click over here click ok and then i'll go to my quick or magic one selection tool make a selection around this image and then i'm going to delete it so when you press the on delete it is going to delete that one for you so i'll choose the polygonal lasso tool and i'll go to refine edges just to make sure that this is a bit refined about 10 will do and this one is going to be around 0 0.005 and i'll hit enter and i'll make sure that i press on the delete button a couple of times just to make sure that the edges will be cool enough to be used on this one next off i'm going to pick my move tool and move this one onto the main documents that we are working on so you can see that we have a couple of edges but that will drag into the white shadows or the white space over here so you don't have to really worry about that all right so i'll press ctrl t to transform this particular shoe and i'll make it a little bit very bigger so like i said this has to be in this one like the white so that except the shadow doesn't kind of like becomes a problem for us so you can increase it up a little bit like this and then you have to drag your shoes also here just to make sure that it just fits and then you can space this one out and then you close this one up a little bit like that so the shoes is going to be in the middle seven as the o for us i hope you get the concept so i'll come back to my shoe layer and i'm going to press ctrl l to add some couple of levels to it just to make it a little bit dark to kind of be the same or complement the background that we are using okay so you can add a couple of levels to it and then you can click ok over here and then you're good to go so the top gentleman shoe as well must come a little bit down here like that so that the design can look nice okay next off i'm going to add the next test to it and i have it over here so i'm going to just copy it and then i'll come back to my document i'll choose the test tool and i'm going to use a font called railway so a link to download that will also be in the description and i'm going to decrease the font size a little bit like this and i'm going to press ctrl v to paste it out like that so i'll change the color to this color that we are using over here and i'll click ok the boldness doesn't have to be that bold so i'll go for the medium italic over here and i think this looks good so i'll try to transform it a little bit more like this and i'll press ctrl a and i'll make sure that it is centered over here i think we can just make this one the semi bold italic and this looks good and we can try to transform it a little bit smaller and push it up small again so next of what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click over here and select my rounded rectangle 
I'll make sure that I have my radius to 150 from here and then I'm going to create a rounded rectangle and then I'll leave it over here and I'll make sure that I press ctrl A to make sure that it is centered as well so what I'm going to do is I'll come back to my backgrounds the backgrounds that I did and the rectangle I'm going to copy that layer style onto that rectangle Be because the interval is wide what I can do is I can right click on this one go to copy layer style and come on the rectangle the rounded rectangle over here and then I'll right click on it and paste layer style so basically you can see that the gradients that we have on this has been copied onto this one as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a test to it so this is the test that I'm going to add available to all sizes so I'll copy it and then I'll make a duplicate of this test make sure that it is on top so I'll drag it on top of the rounded rectangle here and then I'll edit that to this so available for all sizes I'll just bring it over here and change the color to white so that it can be visible for you all to see right over here so that is pretty much very simple and then we push it up a little bit over here next off I'm going to add the shoes that we have that is about four or five of these shoes I'm going to add it over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my rounded rectangle over here again so I'll make my first rounded rectangle here I'm making four of them so I'll make the first one like this the color is definitely going to be white but you can just choose any color for it of course so I right click on it and go to the blending options and I'm going to add a drop shadow to it so you go to drop shadow and you add a drop shadow you make sure that the size is increased up a little bit like this and then you decrease the opacity so that it wouldn't be that much visible so I'll click OK and then I'll make a duplicate four duplicates of them so I'll press ctrl J to make the first duplicate and then I'll bring it over here position it nicely and I'll select the two and make the duplicate again by pressing ctrl J so I'll drag those two again over to this side and then I can space it out to this side looks good I'll select the first one starting from the first rounded rectangle and I'll select the last one I'll press ctrl G to group them and I'll press ctrl T to transform them just so to make sure that it is within the document that we are working on so you transform it like this and you can press ctrl E you center it to make sure that it is within the document that we are working on if it is you just have to press ctrl D to deselect and then you are good to go you can place it over here so inside of these rounded rectangles you're going to place the shoes available here on them so what we do is we open the group over here you choose the first one that is this one on top of that one we're going to add a shoe so I'll go inside of my resources and I'll bring the first shoe over here I'll drag and drop it inside of Photoshop like that and I'll right click rasterize it right click again and then I'll create a clipping mask so it is basically going to fit into that particular rounded rectangle only and we press ctrl T to make sure that it is transformed so that it can be very visible for us to see like this and you can open it up a little bit like that so you do the same thing for the second rectangle you pick the second rectangle you have to make sure that you turn on and off the eye over here to make sure that you are on the right rectangle and then you go into your resources and then you're going to bring the second one this is the second one that I used so I'll place it over here make sure that it is clip masked into the rounded rectangle press ctrl T and then you're going to transform it over here like that so you have it here and then you can just transform it to make sure that it looks good over there you do the same thing for the third and the fourth one once we are done with that we are almost done with the design so the last thing that we're going to add will be the contact details and stuff like that so over here I have the contact details and these 10% discounts should be added so I'm going to push this up a little bit like this and then we're going to add another test beneath of this one so I'm going to add a test here and I'm going to use Acrobat for that particular purpose so I'm going to select Acrobat go and copy this one here and then I'll paste it right over here so I'm going to change the color to this dark over here and click OK 
and make sure that this is in a bold version so i'll go ahead and press ctrl t to transform this one here and i'll bring it just beneath of this one and we are almost through with that one so i'll just press ctrl j to duplicate this bring it on top over here and i'm going to change the color once again back to white so that it can be visible so i'll copy this and then i'm going to paste it over here like that and then i'm going to bring in my call icon over here i'll drag and drop that into photoshop and i'm going to resize it from here and then i'll make sure that it is just around this side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that this one is resized very carefully and placed around this side so i'll go ahead and right click on this one rasterize it and go to the blending options and i'm going to change the color to white so i'll change this one to white as well so that it can be visible and i'll click ok lastly i'm going to duplicate the number and then i'll drag it beneath of this one i'm going to select this one that i've written over here that is the top gentle kind of the motto or something like that and i'm going to paste it over here so i'll select it all and paste it right from there any other thing that you might want to add to this design to make it look so great will be out of your own creativity level and stuff like that so basically yeah that's it that's how to create a very simple shoe advertising flyer for your company or your corporate body any other thing that you may want to refer you to thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to check the other videos advertising videos i'll link some of them in the description and on top here you can click on them to check them out once again thank you so much and i'll see you guys in the next one it's innocent here and bye